month. I'm so excited. I have for you a truly unusual tune. This is a tune by a good friend of mine, John Cannon, who's a fiddler here in Boston. And actually, you may, uh, if you've been following Tune of the Month for a while, that is, you may recognize John Cannon's name. He came and did a guest appearance with me on Tune of the Month last summer when we did some twin harmony fiddling. Uh, so you can go back and check out those videos and see John in action. But now I'm going to show you one of his tunes. John is a great... Um, Quebecois style, New England contradance style fiddler, but he's also a phenomenal klezmer musician. And he writes these tunes that kind of take influence from both styles, the klezmer and the fiddle music. This tune um, he calls Yaron's Cajon, and it's going to combine the klezmer sound, the special scales and modes, with the fiddling idea of a jig. And that's what makes it so unusual because traditionally in klezmer music, there's no such thing as a 6-8 time signature. So here it is, Yaron's Cajon. Klezmer mode scales. The Fragish and the other modes that we typically use. If you don't know anything about that, you're new to Tune of the Month, that's okay. You can either go check out those videos and get into it in detail, or you can just copy the sounds that you hear right now. So this is in a D kind of, uh, it's a, a mode of the harmonic minor scale. So start on your D, put your E flat first finger way back at the nine, big stretch to F sharp. B flat. You find that sound? That's what you're going to need for this tune. All right, well, let's slow it down. Here's the A section. from part to part, and those aren't hard, it's just knowing where they are is important because they give us some interesting bowing options. We still want to keep our general rule of going down bows on down beats, and if we're not careful with our planning, those ties can kind of screw up that plan. So, uh, let's look at how to do it. Part one starts with this D major arpeggio. And then right away, That gives the minor sound. Do it again, part one, D major arpeggio. Down the minor scale. And D major again. Do it again, part one. Not bad, right? It makes sense. 
If you need to do that any more times, just go ahead and rewind the video. You can do it as many times as you need. Here's part two. So that's the first tie. Did you catch where it went? crossing, right? Now I'm going to slur down bow to tie. Now I have to slur two up bows to be ready for the next tie. Do you catch how I did that? Do part two again. String crossing, slur down bow tie, up, down, and tie. Do it again part two. But you notice it has a little different ending. Now we're going to go up to get to the ending. You see that little shift? I call it a part one prime because it's basically part one with just a little different ending. Do part one prime again. And here comes the ending. another tie in it. You see how I handled the bowing? Down, slur, down, up, down. And then I slur all those up bows to get out. Do it again, ending. Sorry. It's also a little bit of a chromatic motion. Did you notice that? E flat, D, D flat. Do that ending again. Let's repeat the whole A section. Part one, D major. Part two, tie. Tie back to part one. Go up for the ending. You got the idea? You may need some more repetition, in which case, go ahead and rewind the video. I'll play with you, as I like to say, as many times as you want. But for now, I'm going to go on to the B section. So the B section has kind of this sequence thing going on, and it's very cool rhythmically. It's all broken thirds. If it were just a reel, we would do that. Now, how I do broken thirds, remember I talk about teams. I have my even number fingered teams in my hand and my odd number fingered teams, one and three, two and four. So broken thirds are just play with a team. Evens, two, four, odds, one, three, evens, odds. That's how you get broken thirds. Now, broken thirds, of course, are duos, dyads, but a jig has triads. So if we do that pattern, it gives it kind of this funky feel. And at the end there, I just have a little scale to finish up. Give it a try, part one. Broken thirds down. Now up the scale. There you go. Now if you want to make this even more klezmer. Do you hear I put that little klezmer trill in there? That's a trill with a half step. Klezmer trills are always half steps, imitating a clarinet sound. Here we go, part one with the sequence, broken thirds.
continuing down like we did with the other ones, we're going to go up. E flat. ending that gets us back to the beginning of the B section. Okay? Let's do this whole first time through the B section. Part 1 sequence, part 2 sequence, part 1 again sequence that goes up for the end. Here we go. Broken notes. Part 2, same sequence, but end it down. There it is, and that's the whole tune. Guys, awesome. Let's repeat, uh, we're going to play through two B sections, one with the first ending that goes all the way up and gets you back to the beginning of the B, and then on the repeat we'll take that second ending that goes down, chills it back out to get back to the A section, or end the tune. Here we go, I start with the broken thirds. shows and it's like one of these tunes that guaranteed to make everybody's eyebrows go, Ooh, what is that? So thanks to John Cannon for serving up this really um, totally out of left field awesomeness. If you'd like to see sheet music for this and any other future tunes of the month, of course, as always, you can subscribe to my email newsletter. Go to my website, www.mariblack.com, hit subscribe for the newsletter, and uh, when I send out my monthly newsletter by email, it will include the sheet music for the tune of the month from that month. So if you're already a member of my uh, newsletter, you already have this in your inbox. And if you're new, well, welcome, and uh, there are more tunes coming. Hopefully you guys have fun with that. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you next month.